past couple weeks, we've been having a lot of fun. At least I think so. I think we've been having a lot of fun. We've been in, in the shop. We've been soldering. We've been doing quite a lot. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're doing something a little different. So, you know, we uh, typically keep things pretty focused, pretty educational today. Well, we've just got a problem to solve. Today we've got a problem to solve, and I want to solve it with you. So there's a fundamental problem that we're battling, and this problem comes from a piece of equipment we just bought. It's pretty common that uh, people can buy cheaper equipment. This is one of those times. And what we have here is the KS, oh goodness, what is it? Don't. It's the KSGER T12 soldering station. All right. And what is my problem with this soldering station, do you ask? Well, it comes down pretty simple. This is an aluminum enclosure, okay? This is an aluminum enclosure on the top. And if we take our ohm meter, if we take our multimeter, I'm just gonna put it in continuity mode to make the point. Beeps when there's continuity. That's not the problem. All right, here's this piece of exposed metal. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna touch the ground pin. What? That's not grounded. If I touch the top of the enclosure, well, that's not grounded either. Well, looks like the anodization is affecting my ability to get the probe on there anyway. But I think you're seeing the point. Touching this exposed metal, it's not connected to mains. Now, it's not connected to line or neutral either, so it's not going to electrocute you outright. But the potential is there. The hazard is there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to upgrade the safety of this power supply considerably by ground bonding the chassis. We are going to add a very, very, very low impedance path to earth ground for this soldering iron. That's it. That's all we're doing. Uh, maybe along the way we'll talk a little bit about why ground bond is so important. And in fact, once I crack this case open, that might be a great time to talk about it. Fundamentally, ground bond is one of those things that is thinking about faults. It's thinking about reasonable faults in a system. In this case, we've got this great power entry module with a fuse on the back and a nice clunk, a clunk switch. So somebody thought about faults. They're like, hey, we should add a fuse in case there's a short circuit fault. Great! That'll keep the thing from burning your house down. But it won't keep it from, I don't know, killing you. <laughs> because you'll be dead before that fuse blows. Pulling off the top of this enclosure. Here's what you can see. You can see there's line which comes in through the power entry module, right? Comes in down here and it connects. Oh, yep. So it connects in here and it comes out to this switch. All right? Comes back through the switch when we have it turned on over there. Super, super great. And it looks like we're actually shorting this to neutral when we're not. So we're like hard switching this thing. Very interesting. Yeah, they're switching it to two places. Weird. All right, anyways, that's not too important. I'm not worried about that. So the problem, the place where ground bond becomes important is what happens if one of these wires comes loose? What happens if one of these wires breaks off, starts floating around in the chassis, and touches the box? Well, if you've implemented ground bonding, what happens is that current flows through the chassis, back to the ground pin, you blow the fuse, you blow the, um, 
if you've got this hooked up to a, uh, a GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, either of those things would save you in that condition. But since there is no path back to earth ground, you just kind of... We're just kind of crossing our fingers and hoping instead. It's not my favorite mode of operation. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna add some wires and make sure that we've got 200 milliohms or less to this enclosure. Might make it look a little bit less pretty. I don't care. <laughs> I would rather be alive than have it look pretty. So I see a, an opportunity on the rear here. I think if we put one of those, we're basically going to use some, scra uh, some screws and uh, short wires to run a ground conductor down to the bottom and up to the top. That, that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to have to drill a little hole in there, run our screw through, easy peasy. So I'll try to see if I can place it where you can put the nut in this little channel. All right, so we can get good contact with the uh, crimp connector. We're gonna put a crimp connector on here. Now, some might think this is a little extreme that I come in here like a madman and you know, scrape away such an excellent surface finish. Oh, how dare you, sacrilege, you're ruining it. Yeah, I don't value the looks of this, I would rather it be safe. And to be honest, I wish they would have used a different enclosure overall. Like, this is not an easy chassis to ground bond. Usually with like a bent sheet metal chassis, it's not too hard. But the way that this is, you know, with all the different metal pieces, we can get these two clamshells pretty well bonded. The front and back are tricky because we don't have big spots where we can add screws. So we're kind of relying on the screws to carry that ground bond to the front and back panel. So now here's where the magic really happens. The fun thing about ground bond is it needs to be able to handle a lot of current. 20 amps, 30 amps, something like that, without melting. This is not going to be compliant. I mean, maybe, maybe it could handle that kind of current. Maybe it could. But these little wires, they're not really made for that. Thankfully, the way that this is set up, we're not actually gonna be able to pass 20 amps through it. So it'll be safe enough that I'm happy before it's actually compliant. And the way that they have this configured, I can't slip the spade on. So I can't have it fully crimped, which would be awesome. I would love to have this thing 100% crimp all the way through. That would be awesome. is on there super tight. I'm going to put on a second one as a lock nut by backing one nut onto the other, wedging a wedge on with a wedge. <laughs> it, it will take quite a lot. It'll make this pretty resistant to 
vibration and everything else, which is good. All right, so that is tight. That is there. Let's test our bond. So now I strip the other end of this wire. Our bond to the screw. Very good. Our bond up here. Five ohms. It's not bad for going through going through some of that coating. Unfortunately, I can't get a so so that was five ohms. Five ohms up to this connector, which is going through that coating. If I can find, well, that heats up. I want to talk to you about the fundamental behind this. It's we were talk, talking about ground and just how it's important. Right? If a wire gets loose and it touches a piece of metal, I want to make sure it's got a good path back to earth so that we're not electrocuting me so that in that fault condition, it's still safe to use this piece of equipment. I'm sure that functionally, if there's a breakdown of isolation, like I'm going to notice, like it's not going to work right. But in the interim, while I'm figuring that out, I'd really rather not get zapped. It just doesn't sound like fun. This is just a, maybe a PSA. That, that sounds right. Be careful when you're buying cheap crap off the internet. I would never buy a piece of equipment like this and not open it up. What I did today was take something that was absolutely a death trap. Do not put mains in a metal box that you can touch without making sure that it's earthed. Like, without an earth connection, this is a, a death trap at best. No, 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 it's a death trap at worst and an accident waiting to happen at best. One small mistake. That's all it takes. And yeah, I checked to make sure it was isolated before I plugged it in. That's like, that's the bare minimum. Hey, look at that with all the screws turned in. Up to this front chassis, we're getting 0.1 ohms. I'm on the front to the ground pin at the power input. 0.1 ohms. To the screw over here. 0.2. We know that this front panel screw is getting its ground bond from this point, from this point, through these screws up to the front and the back. So we can be pretty confident that the whole thing is bonded well and it'll be safe. And that's really the whole point. That's how you can take the KSGER and take it from an accident waiting to happen to a safe tool that I'm not gonna cringe every time I touch. Well, at least a relatively safe tool that I'm not going to cringe. I still wouldn't sell it. I wouldn't put my name behind it, but hey. At least I don't think it'll electrocute me. That is a level. If you like this, might be short, might be long, no idea what it's gonna edit down to, but, oh, you know what? You can't just leave a video there. I think we've gotta do what, what everyone in the comments would tell me I need to do. Let's power it on. Make sure that we didn't ruin it. All that fanfare.
Screw that down. Hey, hey, we're on. Look at that. So if we're getting two volts across a two meg resistor, that'd be two microamps of current. Not bad. <laughs> when I put myself in parallel, the voltage drops. So yeah, it's definitely passing some current through me to ground, but not very much. I prefer that to the alternative, I suppose. All right, all right. Well, hope you learned something great today. If you're interested in buying this death trap and you want to modify it, <laughs> put a link down in the description. But uh, again, this is not UL listed. This is not a safe product. And I can't recommend that anyone buy it or use it with or without this modification. But it is cheap. So it's got that going for it. <laughs> and it does heat up really fast. So thanks for watching.